This presentation is about error handling. Um, so first of all, there are three kinds of errors that typically come up in programming. Um, the syntax error, which is an error in the form of your program, and something that the um, VBA system can catch. They call it a compiler error. Then there is a runtime error, which is something that happens in runtime that prevents your program from progressing normally, and it terminates abnormally. And typically, you get some kind of little error message. And finally, there's a logic error, which is where your program appears to run fine. It's just got some mistake in the logic that's making it produce a wrong answer. So let's consider these individually. So first of all, with syntax errors, um, these are caught by the environment, and they also try to give you a suggestion for how to fix it. They can be really annoying, you know, because um, it's just some little mistake and you, ha you can't progress until you fix it. But on the other hand, because you can't progress, um, and they're typically pretty straightforward to correct, then once you get a little bit of experience programming, they're, they're not going to be a lot of trouble for you. And um, you can use the built-in help to, to uh, diagnose and correct them. So um, those are just something you have to deal with, but in the great scheme of things, not a big deal. Okay, now on the other end of the spectrum are logic errors. Uh, with a logic error, your program runs fine. And uh, the only problem is it's producing the wrong answer. So in, for this, to deal with these, this is why you really need to develop tests before you write your program. You can't just assume that your program or your spreadsheet is producing a correct answer. You have to have um, a suite of uh, test cases where you know what the correct answer should be that's developed independently of your program or your spreadsheet in order to do a careful and thorough test. And this is really important because you might be depending on the results that you're getting from your program. So uh, very important, um, and testing is the way to deal with it. So have you ever read the fine print? Have you ever actually read one of those um, things you have to agree to when you're downloading software? Um, that dirty little secret is that most commercial software actually has a few bugs in it, including logic errors. And uh, the disclaimer basically says in a lot of cases that, well, if you um, have some damages resulting from a bug in this software, you're not allowed to sue the manufacturer to recover the cost of those damages. Uh, now, this doesn't seem like a very good situation, uh, this, but one of the reasons is that in the software business, people believe that the first program that does a particular kind of task that gets out there has a huge advantage over any competitors that come along later. So even if a uh, piece of software is not completely tested, is not completely bug-free, sometimes a manufacturer will put it out there trying to capture the market and thinking, oh, we'll fix the problems later. And um, since this strategy has been successful, it's hard to blame them too much, but it's really not very professional. Okay, the third type of error is the runtime error. And this is when the program encounters an unexpected condition that it can't handle. So a typical thing could be division by zero. Um, if your program needs a file and the file's not there, uh, the user enters a value where it should be a number. They enter a word or something like that. These are common causes of runtime errors. Now, a well-written program should recover gracefully from these kind of errors. It should not actually get a runtime error. And so what we're going to talk about is how to try to handle runtime errors so that they are minimized or, in the best case, don't ever occur. So one thing is, in order to determine how your program reacts to these kind of unexpected situations, you should brainstorm and develop use cases, not just for the normal case, but for any erroneous kind of cases that might come up. And for each of these error cases, you should have one or more tests. So like if you have option buttons, what happens if the person doesn't pick one? If you have a field where something has to be entered, what happens if they enter something that's not the right data type? And so on. And um, if your program is not able to deal with any of these situations, then it's up to you to develop a way to do better. 
So, um, for example, we've already seen some of these error handling approaches in the programs we've written um, earlier in the course. So, for example, where we're getting the name of a file to use, and um, we use the get open file name function. If the user doesn't actually choose a file, then this function returns false. And if false is returned, then um, what we do is we exit the subroutine, we jump out, uh, which, you know, is one way to react. We, and hopefully we could also give a message to the user in here that says, hey, um, you need to choose a file or I'm quitting because you didn't choose a file or something to give the user some information. Now, um, another thing we've seen how to do is to trap errors and say on error, go to some label. So here, um, we're basically bailing out and at the label, uh, what we've, the code we've used says on error, go to zero, which just basically quits the program. Now, a little sidebar here on go to's in the olden days of programming, uh, there were no structured things like um, the if then else or the do while. There was an if, but no if then else. So instead, what people used were go to's and labels for everything. And for loops, there was a go to the loop, you know, if the condition, then go to a label after the loop, otherwise go back and stuff like that. Um, you can write a program that does whatever you need to do with just the if and go to and some labels. But these programs can become very, very messy and hard to understand, and it's a very error-prone way of programming. So in the late 1960s, a very famous article came out called Go To Considered Harmful, and it sparked a whole effort to replace um, the need for the go-to with structured statements like the if-then-else, the for-next, the do-while, the things we've been learning about. Now, the one place where you still often need to jump out of the normal path of execution is when an error occurs. And so although the go-to is usually avoided, you will see it being used to handle certain kinds of errors. Now, um, there are other approaches. One is to use the exit. So as we saw in our earlier example with the get open file name, um, if it returned false, we exited the subroutine. Uh, this is similar to go to in that we're kind of jumping out in the middle, um, but it is a little more uh, readable because you can see exit, okay, I'm exiting, a little more structured. Another approach is to use default. So um, if the user doesn't enter a required value in a field such as a text box, uh, there's a default value that takes over. You can use the user form initialized um, procedure to help prevent such errors by setting up defaults. And you'll notice if you do shopping on the web that um, many sites initialize the quantity box either to zero or one because um, one is the most commonly chosen quantity. And zero means, well, no harm done. You know, if you didn't really mean to buy anything, if you forgot to set it, then it's a zero, so you didn't buy anything. Okay, another choice uh, approach is to limit choices. So any time that instead of having the user type something, you can have them choose from a list, then um, you're much less likely to get an error. You're limiting the choices to correct ones at least. So again, you'll see this on sites where you have to enter your address, and a lot of times they'll give you a list of states to choose from instead of having you type the name of your state. Okay, another thing you can do is to scrutinize the um, input to see if there's a potential for causing an error, and if so, to correct it. Now, this way is a lot more work, but it's also probably the best way to do things. So, for example, if somebody puts a, no num a non-number in where a number was expected, you can write code that will scrutinize the input string carefully, um, before trying to convert it to a number and give an error message and jump out if there, if it wasn't a number and otherwise continue. Um, I'll show you an example of this in the second part. So um, 
Right now, I just want to consider a short, briefly the on error go to kind of construct, and then we'll do the scrutiny in another part. So one thing to do is on error go to zero. Uh, this makes VBA display a standard runtime error message box. Uh, you can also enter code if you're in debug mode. This is the same behavior you get if there's no error handler at all. So you should try to do better if you have the time. Now another option you can do is on error resume next. And this just says if there's an error, then just ignore it and continue with the next line of code. Now. This could be okay in some situations, but there could be unintended consequences if the line that caused the error was do, doing something vital to your program. So this is not always appropriate, but it's good to know about. Another one which we discussed is on error, go to a specific label. And um, at the label, you can try to correct the error or at the very least give a message and er exit gracefully. So. Um, our file reading programs, for example, have used this kind of error recovery. And a typical structure is to have that error handler label at the end of the code and exit the subroutine if you've progressed normally up to that point before you hit it. So as the example structure, you have the word sub uh, on error go to error handler to begin with, and that sets it up for the whole subroutine. And here's your normal code, and if after you finish that, you exit the subroutine, so that only if an error occurs will you jump down to here, thus avoiding this line, and give out some kind of a message. Now, instead of exiting, after you get to the error handler, you can resume, which um, resumes executing at the statement following the... Um, error or at a specific label. So what this does is give your program a chance to try to correct the error and then go back and keep working. Um, now one thing VBA can do with a plain resume is to go back to the line that caused the error and try again. So obviously you have to have done something to try to fix the error in the meantime. Um, and your program therefore know, needs to know what kind of error occurs. And there is a property called error number error dot number that will help your program figure that out. Um, there is an, also an error description to go with each error number and these can be extremely valuable when you're debugging your code. Next page I'm showing an example code structure that I got off of Osgrid. So here we're doing on error go to error handler and here we're giving a message box with the error number and the description which if you're debugging will be extremely useful. Okay, resume next, resumes at the line following where the error occurred. So again, this what this will do is let you in your error handler do something to correct the error and then go back and keep going. Resume at label sends you to a label which you put in your code, uh, which wouldn't have any effect in the normal execution but if you hit an error, you fix it, and then you jump back to that specific place. Um, and again, you should compensate for the code that was skipped. Okay, now that um, covers using these kind of techniques where the system recognizes a runtime error and uh, you've set up your program to respond. The next part of this, in part two, we're going to to discuss um, how to try to prevent these errors by doing checking in the code. Okay, so that's next.